What is going on guys and girls? How doing to that single roleplayer here once again? Today I want to talk about uh, the build that I've been playing for the last couple of weeks and I want to show you uh, guys the build and this is Kinetic Blast Barrage Wonder that I built. Let's go! So first of all, uh, the question that you probably get like what is Wonder? What is, what is this wondering about? This is a question that uh, most new players will uh, have because they haven't played Wanderers, they have now the deep knowledge about Path of Exile. So Wander is a character that carries a wand and he attacks with a wand. There's only five skills in Path of Exile um, that uh, can be used to, to attack with a wand, which are Kinetic Blast, Barrage, Elemental Hit, Frenzy and Power Siphon. There's also Val Power Siphon version as well, so only five skills to attack with the wand. Uh, the reason why I decided to play Wonder this league is because um, not only I wanted to actually push kind of once to the max, I also wanted to see what uh, Wonders are capable of because they have been nerfed twice. Uh, the first nerf was about uh, the uh, Kinetic Blast itself which was nerfed quite a long time ago and then um, the previous patch we got the nerf to the Abyssal Jewels uh, which were literally um, cut by about 30 to 40 percent in stats so all these combined uh, really made a lot of questions for the wonders state of wonders how good they are are they even capable of doing enough damage for the end game how are they for clear speed are they still can do this or cannot anymore so all these questions combined um, uh, I really wanted to explore the wandering area and this is kind of a project that I wanted to do a long time ago uh, back in the day, I haven't really had the time or the currency to invest into this build properly, but this league uh, literally shits currency, uh, so I decided I'm gonna go all in and invest and see just what I can do with this. So speaking about the nerfs, uh, like I said, both Kinetic Blast and the Abyssal Jewels were nerfed thanks to this uh, Abyssal Jewel stacking science, whatever. Uh, so. Jewels got a huge nerf and it was really uh, dramatically affected the Wanderers because they mostly uh, stack the damage through the Abyssal Jewels and um, uh, for example if you compare this to the previous patch like 3.6 and 3.7 uh, in 3.6 it was in 3.4 like 5 it was pretty possible to uh, get like 6.5 thousand life, even 7 thousand life on a wonder if you really want to invest. Uh, currently it is very hard to go to 6 thousand life, literally impossible. I, s I got almost every slot filled with life, every jewel has life and still I have 5.8 thousand, about 5.9 thousand life, that's about it. The flat damage uh, took a huge hit on the jewels as well, uh, so that they've been cut by around 30%. Um, uh, and overall, uh, it's very hard to get a good jewel now. They like cost a lot of currency. Even a decent jewel cost, and they can exalt a couple of a couple of exalts. The the lack of good jewels and the lack of high life pool makes this build uh, definitely harder than before. Like way harder to achieve even decent amount of levels of damage and. Uh, sustain and survival ability so uh, I can only recommend this build guys if you want to invest if you want to see uh, what wonders can do if you want to have fun because this is an incredibly strong uh, speed farming build the AOE is still fucking amazing the single target is still problematical just on like on any wonder but barrage still solves the problem for the single target I killed Shaper with just Kinetic Blast, I specifically wanted to see just how strong is Kinetic Blast on its own. Shaper was not an issue. For the Uber Elder, uh, unfortunately I decided I'm gonna use Barrage because the damage was just not there for the uh, Uber Elder with just the Kinetic Blast. So that's about it. Thinking about the types of Wonder builds, you can probably, if you check the Path of Exile forums, we'll see two types. One is the Physical Wonders and one is the Elemental Wonders. I specifically wanted to do the build as this kind of semi-affordable version because you know um, physical it requires way more investment. Physical is way more expensive version of the build. Um, a physical version of Wonders is practically the same as Elemental, except you also need 
to have a very strong physical one which is a big issue I checked the prices in the Legion and uh, I, I found a good ones from in, in the range of like 15 to 20 25 exalts which is way beyond what elemental uh, ones are crafting a decent elemental one costs you literally like four exalts and for the most part of the game you can you can even run with Piscatus Vigil which is one chaos so it, the comparison between the physical wonder and the elemental wonder is practically that physical does a slightly more damage but is uh, also uh, more investment and it literally is uh, the same like technically it's the same uh, variation because physical uh, also converts its physical to extra elemental and extra elemental to extra chaos or whatever penetration all that stuff is practically the same thing except you have physical damage on top of your elemental damage uh, just the elemental wonder uh, it's a pretty straightforward easy semi easy to gear let me say this it also allows you to use an extremely cheap uh, weapon which is Piscatus Vigil 1 which is, is pretty much a top tier one of the most top tier weapons for the uh, this build is and it's one chaos literally so uh, even with just the Piscatus Vigil you already get 1 million DPS uh, with this build that's why I decided I'm gonna go elemental version here What's up guys, let's take a look at Pother building. This is a pretty standard Wonder Tree with a couple of uh, changes uh, for the uh, 3.7 and above. So we're starting as a Ranger and uh, grab this Max Life Juicy Notes, get your Heart of the Oak, 8% increase Max Life as well as uh, Primal Spirit for Strength and Intelligence. We need a lot of Intelligence for this build to make it work and use Piscatus Vigil as our intermediate a weapon uh, then uh, the first thing you need to go is to grab point blank as fast as possible 50% more uh, damage mm, for projectile attack hits at the start of the movement so this pretty much when you're close to the enemies when they start moving uh, you get 50% more multiply which is a kind of mandatory to get as uh, fast as possible there's also a lot of juicy notes like command of the elements there's thick skin for life uh, grab Golem's Blood, One Jewel Node, uh, Bravery, uh, Art of the Gladiator, all of these are pretty important Fury Balls. So the first thing is grabbing this thing uh, on the left and bottom, which is Primeval Force as well. After about like 50-40 we start growing up, grab Herbalism, another Jewel Socket, uh, Heartseeker, not really important to grab at the early game, but grab this Crit Strike chance to start critting. Uh, grab acrobatics. I specifically took one acrobatic nose on the tree, but most people I know they're taking pure both face acro and uh, the normal acro as well. So it's up to you to decide what you're gonna pick on this. Another jewel node over here, which is uh, the juices because it has projectile damage as well. After that, we'll just be climbing up to this um, juicy elder power, all these uh, fat van nodes over there. Uh, just to grab as much intelligence as possible. Like I said, we need a lot of intelligence for the build. Uh, this is where my watch's eye is. Uh, also, make sure you get blood siphon, coordination, uh, trickery, all these decks, intelligence, strength, crit for the assassination, for the call hearted calculation. This is attack damage, intelligence once again. Uh, these are two juicy notes, which is arcing blows and correcting speed uh, for the crit throat seeker. Uh, wind uh, wind slinger for the attack speed with once and increased damage and the last probably will be just this things over there that's about it keep in mind that this is a pretty standard wonder tree which is kind of the easiest to follow um, I'm currently running a different tree in my character because I'm using a timeless jewel which was given to me by one of my followers to test and the, the timeless jewel is located there so I had to spec into the left side of the tree instead of the top side of the tree so my tree uh, my current tree is quite different simply because I'm using a timeless jewel but this tree it's a pretty standard it's like a set in stone for the most vand builds you will see there uh, they will practically most likely will use this kind of a tree out there for the ascendancies this is my personal choice um, the first thing is gathering winds then I took fast and deadly powerful precision and rupture rupture I actually took as a cruel lab because it's a pretty massive damage boost as you can see it's uh, quite a lot of damage so um, 
this year. This that's my personal choice. Gathering wins is of course mandatory for any dead I built out there. Uh, a lot of people also choose far shot and endless munition instead of fast and deadly and powerful precision. But honestly, I think that powerful powerful precision is kind of super important for the farming because a projectiles have 100% increased crew strike chance against target they pierce and since they pierce all the fucking time uh, they literally you literally get 100% increased crit strike chance against everything absolutely every every fucking mob there so this is like very important to have in my opinion that's about it about the tree guys let's talk about the items real quick so we're using a wand to attack and this wand uh, is probably the top tier wand you will ever need for this build this is extremely hard to get very uh, hard to craft uh, this kind of added lightning damage can only be uh, acquired uh, through the um, deafening essence of wrath this this is an essence craft on a cheaper level 86 uh, well, like 84 or 86 uh, imbued van imbued van is there for the high attacks per second this is the base you need to craft your uh, vans for so uh, this thing is crafted with a deafening essence of wrath because uh, it hits the high tier lightning damage as well as the cheaper uh, elemental damage as extra kick damage and the rest is just multi-mod for attack speed, crit strike chance and a penetration. This is the ideal perfect wand that you need for this build. I'm currently running uh, a wand that, ch that is cheaper the this. It gives me less damage but this is uh, way cheaper than the one that I just showed you. Well, this is literally four exalts. This is very easy to get, very easy to buy. You just kind of annul uh, a couple of shitty mods and then just multi mod. That's kind of this kind of cheap and affordable. This is 4x one here. Uh, of course, the super affordable, mega cheap option is Piscatus Vigil, and you will need a Piscatus Vigil with uh, the um, uh, with the penetration. This is practically uh, still gives you over a million and a half damage, so it's not bad. Uh, I bought this thing for about 20 chaos, I believe. So the damage, uh, the, the price range on the Piscatas with the pen uh, is about like 20, 30 chaos to one exalt, so nothing crazy. It's still cheaper than uh, the cry multi mod at crafted wand, but so this is kind of unaffordable. The only problem with the Piscata, like I said, is uh, the very, very high intelligence requirement, which is hard to get in the early game. There's 212 intelligence, so it's very fucking hard to get unless you specifically climb up on top, gathering all these intelligence on the tree. So that's a bit of a problem at the start of the game. Uh, but imbued van is actually not a problem. Imbued van needs uh, 188 intelligence, so it's uh, lower, like 300 less, so it's already somewhat manageable. Uh, for the offhand, we'll be using uh, elegant round shield with attack damage, attack speed, some kind of life, and you can also craft double damage on this one. Now, this is uh, your ideal shield that you need for the build because this is this kind of base can get attack damage and attack speed, and this is exactly what you need on this. This is pure like DPS shield with some defense on it. Uh, I currently run this one, uh, which is uh, aspect of the spider, a life, a resistance, whatever shield, simply because it was kind of cheap to get. Uh, and this leak, aspect of the spider, is incredibly affordable. Everything drops aspect of the spider, so this shield was I was super lucky to get it for like nothing, and I'm using it. But uh, you know, this kind of shield is what you need to aim for. This is just very strong. For helmet, well, there's a couple of options. Um, uh, for the DPS, for the single target, for the shaper, for the elder, you would need a and a helm enchant with a barrage fire as an additional projectile. This is the helm that I used to defeat my uber elder with. Basically, life uh, lightning resistance, nearby enemies reduction. Uh, nearby enemies have minus lightning res and some life and resistance, nothing crazy. Barrage fire as an additional projectile for the helm enchant. Uh, the best option for the farming is Hail Negator. Uh, like I said, we will be stacking quite a lot of Abyssal Jewels. And for the uh, Key B, this is probably the best thing you need to get, which is Hail Negator. Kinetic Blast has a 75% chance for additional explosion. 
This is uh, kind of a farming helm enchant, which I totally recommend for any kinetic blast build. Another option will be the light poacher, which is also another option for the build. Uh, the difference between the light poacher and the, the hell negator is that um, hell negator has uh, life on it and uh, light poacher has resistance in it. So uh, for the uh, hell negator, you need to compensate the, the absence of resistance with some abyssal juice, probably. And for the light poacher, you have to compensate the absence of the uh, life with some life jewels in it. So it's kind of like this this either this or that depending on what you can live with that for example if you can live with the absence of res um, uh, go with the uh, hail negate if you need resistance go with the light poacher it also depends on what is available on the market because uh, these items are not re relatively cheap they are like a free 4x uh, price so depending on what is affordable what you can get on the, for your build just use it i'm currently using uh, this thing for my build uh, Abyssal Jewels, uh, pretty much stress standard, cold lightning damage to attacks, life and uh, wand attacks damage, all kind of flat damage you can get on this, crit multiplier also very very nice. For the gloves, uh, there are two options here, one option is a Tom Fist with the crit strike chance corruption for attacks, these are very expensive gloves, I specifically invested in these gloves and they are like 70x cheapest that I could find. Uh, the price ranges from like 70x to 50 exhausts to even 70 exhausts as it stretches out into fucking in other dimensions. So this is a super expensive gloves, uh, but the most important thing on the gloves is not really the crit, this is like the end game cherry on top of the pie. Uh, but just the fact that you can use two abyssal sockets for even more abyssal jewels and I'll explain you uh, why you need uh, this. Uh, you need a lot of Abyssal Jewels for this reason. We will be using Shroud of the Lightless Carnal Armor with one Abyssal Socket. This is the absolute best um, chest for the one Kinetic Plus build. Why? Because it is a 5 link, which is actually a 6 link. So it has 5 sockets there and one Abyssal Socket. And it also has, has, has socket gem supported by level 20 elemental penetration, so you have like innate 6 link. And at the same time you don't need to 6 link it, you only 5 link it. On top of that, it has 1% increased maximum life per abyssal jewel effect and you think about it. We get like fucking 10 abyssal jewels, so there's like 10% increased maximum life for this chest. On top of 10% that it has already. This is an incredible chest, I greatly underestimated it over the years and now I'm literally using it for literally any fucking build which uses Abyssal uh, Jewels, I can strongly recommend this chest because it's very strong. Another options are Ink Innocent Heart, Lore Weave, but they all pale in comparison to the uh, Shroud of Lightness because it's just so incredibly strong for the build. Uh, the boots are once again bubonic trails with uh, two abyssal sockets. They're not entirely cheap, but this league they were kind of affordable about like four exalts for these boots. Uh, the enchant that you need to get in this is the damage penetration or added cold damage. So, I have two options here. Uh, I personally uh, got my added cold on this as uh, the enchant because I just got it myself. But damage pen is what you need to aim for for the absolute top tier damage. Like I said, we only get all this for the Abyssal Jewels, as much as possible stack Abyssal Jewels with all kind of flat damage for the build, that's how it works. The amulet that I have in the build is a top tier uh, amulet which is all the pricing with the um, Ref Reserve Snow Mana. This is mandatory if you want to really min max and push the Kinetic Blast to the absolute. Uh, max, then this is the amulet you need to be looking for. This is a very expensive amulet. Uh, the cheapest that I could find, I think it was uh, 15 to 17 exalts. I think I bought my phone for the 14 or 15, I don't remember. But that's about like 15 to 20 exalts. This is a very expensive amulet. It's, it's incredibly strong, it has no resistance, which is a disadvantage. But it is incredibly strong because with this amulet, you solve your problem with the Wrath. Wrath is a hungry aura, it resolves 50% of mana. And this amulet allows you to literally use a ref, a ref for free, allowing you to reserve both heralds 
you can use war banner you can use aspect of the spider you can use precision uh, you can literally use a lot of auras to buff your damage uh, which is so important for the weak uh, relatively weak kinetic blast build so uh, this is a super expensive uh, amulet which you need to uh, have in your build if you really want to min max it but it's not entirely mandatory you can also use um, some amulets such as this which is cheaper amulets with damage penetration you can also use elder amulets with the non chaos damage as, as extra chaos damage there are plenty of options that you can run around it's not mandatory like this this expensive thing is not really meant like crazy mandatory for the build there are plenty of options there uh, that you can use so it's quite flexible actually the only problem we will encounter if you use any of this is ref reservation you can probably drop herald of ice because this gives you like the least uh, DPS boost out of all your auras or you can uh, drop aspect of the spider although I'm not recommending aspect of the spider is fucking OP so herald of ice uh, is what you probably need to drop into the into if you don't want to if you can use all uprising for the rings, there's also uh, multiple options here. Taming is probably the first thing that comes to mind for any elemental attack builds. This is not cheap, but it also uh, gives you a tremendous amount of damage and crazy amount of resistance. Unfortunately, no life on this, but this is just an example of a ring that you need to, if you want to like go full guns blazing, this is what you need to do. I personally don't use taming, I use the life rings with resists and uh, uh, Warlord's Mark and Assassin's Mark so taming is just there guys for, to show you what ring you can use for the build the second ring is probably just uh, Aspect of the Spider if you can get it and Assassin's Mark on top of it this is a pretty insane ring but personally uh, I'm using uh, something like this which is a way way uh, way way uh, kind of uh, cheaper than this. I use uh, you can just use a ring with any assassin's mark or the world's mark. I personally use world's mark because I want it to be really tanky. I want it to uh, leech uh, more. I want it to stay alive against the legion. So uh, the ring uh, should be only the assassin's mark or the world's mark. Anything else is not really recommended in my opinion. The belt is practically just a uh, Stygian vice with once again one extra socket and I think this is kind of a legacy one, yeah this is kind of a legacy one I believe. So anyway, uh, yeah the belt is basically Stygian vice with elemental damage, uh, cold lightning damage, life, just whatever you can. Uh, Elemental damage with attacks and increased damage. This is like a pure DPS belt. If you can get some belt with decent amount of life in it, use it. But this is kind of an all guns blazing belt that I currently have on the build. For the flasks, I will go very briefly about this. I will explain more in the actual build guide. So, a serious promise for the leech, a leech and elemental damage as extra chaos damage. Dying sun for the extra projectiles for your kiwi and for a barrage. Uh, the other free flask, uh, Quicksilver with the crit strike chance enchant, and this is uh, your mastermind enchant. Divine life flask simply to survive, and diamond flask uh, just to get your crit strike chance lucky because crit strike chance is pretty insane already in this build. If you don't want to use, uh, for example, diamond flask, you can always use uh, Ving Tar for the damage. Or another option is using um, a Y-Zog, even though it's a little bit less damage than uh, the Diamond Flask. So I personally use Y-Zog instead of the Diamond Flask and it's not really uh, you know, a big fucking problem there. This is mostly just you know, for, for the... Um, this is mostly just for the number. It's not really crazy that mandatory. Uh, one a small thing about the watch's eye and uh, this is the watch's eye that you would need for the build and I would not say they are extremely expensive I bought this one for 17 exalts and I got like uh, super top tier rolls on this one so uh, if you get the, the ref one just make sure you get the ref penetration as your first jewel and then if you can add more currency to it just get crit and penetration ref jewel for here Precision crit multiply is also not bad, but precision somewhat prices for the precision jewels are absolutely retarded this week. So uh, if you can possibly get it somewhere cheap, you can use it as well. But this one is undoubtedly cheaper. For the um, 
For the bandits, it's kill all, it's nothing crazy. You can go Alira if you wish, if you will be sucking on resistances and crits, so if you can go Alira, but I personally went kill all for the extra two points, it's nothing crazy, that's about it. Now let's talk about the skills really quick, guys. I will explain everything in a path of uh, Exile Forums thread, but I just wanna give you like a quick look after what skills you're gonna be looking for there. First of all, this is your 6 link kinetic blast. Kinetic blast link with increased crit damage and uh, elemental damage with attacks. GMP, this is the, for the speed farming. Hypothermia is mandatory to have, as well as a slow projectiles for the bosses. You can also use energy leech, which is slightly more damage over slow, over slower projectiles as well. And this is just 5 links. Uh, like I said, we got uh, turn to Shroud of the Lightless gives us uh, six link with elemental penetration. That's about it. Uh, I, in the early game, I also used Pierce before I managed to get my uh, powerful precision. So, you know, many options can be used there. For the boots, we have two link bubonic traps with blood rage and summon ice got him. For the gloves, like I said, two links as well with steel skin and dash there. I, I cast dash and steel skin manually. Uh, this is our one where I s my precision sits with Onslaught and Herald of Thunder. This is pretty tricky because sometimes Herald of Thunder actually kills things and you get Onslaught. I actually noticed this. That's why I decided I'm gonna use Onslaught there. This is not really mandatory, but it actually does happen once in a while. So use this. Uh, I think it will be a lot of fun. For the offhand, this is why my main auras resist, which is Herald of Ice, Innervate and Wrath. Now, uh, Herald of Ice also kills once in a while with the shattering and crits and you get Innervation which is added a lightning damage. This is another trick that I do for the build. Probably not many people do this nowadays. This is our helmet and this uh, v will vary from a two link to uh, from the two link to four link depending on if you're using Hail Negator or uh, the um, uh, the light poacher or the just a normal rare which I personally use cast one damage taken with the model call this will synergize really well with the world's mark ring which I also use here uh, sometimes I use world's mark for the toughness so you can get always free endurance charges which really well synergizing with the model call is still kind of useful on top of the steel skin can save your life a while a projectile weakness is not really mandatory, you can use blind here for example if you wish, uh, so you can like use uh, low level fucking blind for example, it's not really crazy, it's not really life changing projectile weakness, it will overwrite your assassin's mark as well, so it's kind of a, a gimmick that I'm using right uh, right now to the build. I also used it at the very early, early game before uh, I couldn't get assassin's mark, so I used custom damage taken with projectile weakness there. Wave of Conviction is another gimmick that is kind of very useful, it's super strong. Uh, it gives you uh, uh, exposure to lightning and uh, this also gives you quite a bit of damage on the bosses which is quite quite important to have. Uh, this is, these are different options that uh, I'm having there in path of building. If you want to use KB or Barrage in a 5 link or the 4 link, uh, the basic idea behind the build was to use a kinetic blast in a fucking six link and barrage uh, whenever, whenever it's possible. Eventually I decided I'm gonna set up on the uh, barrage and kinetic blast on a six link. So I'm just switching chests, I have two different chests. I'll explain it in a very short video afterwards how I actually play this. But uh, if you want to put this in a full link or in a helm or in a, on a gloves, you can also use this. There are many places where you can place kinetic blast or the barrage. For example, one important um, and popular option is to put kinetic blast in the uh, in, in the gloves with the thunder fist. There's also thunder fist there. Yeah, thunder fist is a cheap, like one alchemy glass, which gives you added lightning damage level 18 which is quite a lot of damage and it's also a very cheap class which you can use for like literally one alchemy. The, the disadvantage of this is there's no life whatsoever, no resist, so it's purely like DPS gloves. Another possible variation is glass with the, um, is the shaper glass with slow projectiles. Uh, on a gripple, uh, on a gripple gloves base, these are pretty expensive but 
still quite affordable, like under an exalt you can get something decent. So there are quite a lot of different options where you can put your kinetic blast and uh, a barrage if you wish, like to use four link or five link. Another option is if, if you if you want to do this is to use hypothermia helm. There you can use hypothermia helm for the barrage or the kinetic blast if you want to run like five link and six link or six link and five link, whatever. You can mix things back and forth, but I prefer to do it in a different way. Uh, I prefer to use two. Uh, chest, two shroud of the lightless, both five linked. I have all my skills ready. If I want to face a, like a strong boss, I just uh, put in a different chest, and I'm I'm already here. I'm already can do all damage I need. That's about it. That's that's how I use it personally. Just a very short explanation on my personal take on how I handle this build, guys. So like I explained you a couple of minutes ago, I'm using two separate chests. Uh, I wanted to maximize damage. I don't want to use a gimped uh, five link barrage or a four link kinetic blast or something like this. So I came into uh, a pretty unique, I think, route. Uh, pretty unorthodox way how to do this. I just decided I'm gonna five link another shroud of the lightless chest and just I wanna put all my fucking barrage there. And I also bought another helm with barrage, and I'm running a chest with kinetic, uh, a helm with a separate kinetic blast. So, whenever I go to the shaper or Uber elder, I just do this, and uh, that's about it. I have my barrage ready. If I want to get back to kinetic blast, guys, I do this. So my kinetic blast is ready. That's about it. It's that easy. No need to get rid of some useful uh, quality like precisions, heralds, uh, custom damage taken, no need for this, just uh, uh, get another chest which is like 20, 10 chaos or whatever, it's very cheap, uh, Shroud of the Lightless is an incredibly cheap chest and uh, it's much cheaper to just use the second chest instead of uh, putting your uh, kinetic blast in a 4 link or the 5 link because we are really short on the links here, we are maximizing our damage with the Abyssal Jewels, as you can see. So, I can totally recommend abusing this uh, cheap 5 link as much as possible. Uh, this way you will just do a lot of damage and uh, destroy everything, that's it. As the summary of uh, the build guide, I want to thank you guys for watching it. It's uh, been a pretty long, it's pretty deep build, I've invested a lot of currency into it, I wanted to make it great again, and it's indeed a very strong build. This is a, an Elder Beach, which is tier 16 with uh, 5 sextants, uh, 3 sacrifice fragments, as well as uh, another extra breach in it, which is super beefed up content there, and it really breezes through all content there. Uh, without any problems. The clear speed is amazing. The AoE is absolutely crazy unlike anything I've seen in the game. If you wanna uh, if you wanna make a solid strong build, I can totally recommend Kinetic Blast. It's also very easy to transform into the magic fine build. You basically just do your uh, casual venters, biscos, whatever uh, thing and it's uh, instantly becomes a magic fine build, queen of the forest and all that shit. There will be enough damage to sustain and uh, farm with absolutely crazy speed. Uh, I specifically wanted to prove myself and prove everyone that Kinetic Blast is still viable, is still a strong build and the single target with Barrage is very respectable as well. I would say it's not terrible, it needs time to get used to but it's still is still absolutely there. Uh, I killed Shaper with just a bar uh, with just a kinetic blast. I didn't even use barrage, and uh, it was not it was not bad at all. It was manageable. It was uh, the damage was okay. It was not terrible. I did not struggle whatsoever. Uh, on the Uber Elder, I quickly realized that um, the, uh, this is where kinetic blast kind of ends. I drop kinetic blast and just use uh, just the barrage to kill Uber Elder, which was not an entirely easy fight at all, but it was not terrible. I can f I faced Shaper literally multiple times out of the phases, just move phases very fast with the barrage. With barrage, um, uh, you know, uh, placing your con of projectiles is very important because it's kind of a tricky. It's a it's not the fun skill to play, it's just for the killing the bosses, it's not fun, but it just does the job where Kinetic Blast kind of fails already. So uh, this is where, this is how it works. 
So thanks for watching guys and see you soon. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for watching the video. Your likes and dislikes, especially as they push me forward even more. If you want to see more content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do daily uploads of role-playing content, Bennett builds, guides, let's play, stream highlights and upcoming RPG games. Also, don't forget to follow my Twitch stream to catch me live in action. I do stream daily on walking days. I'm a full-time YouTube content creator and a Twitch streamer too, so if you want to support me, you can do it either from Twitch or by PayPal directly from my website angryrollplayer.com. Join my Discord channel too for a place to discuss RPG things offline as well as follow my Twitter to be notified on any new content. If you want to get extra information like sneak peeks into upcoming videos, plans, different behind-the-scenes footage, you can also join the Unholy Army on Patreon as well, guys. Thank you very much once again for watching and listening to all this. See you soon.